Hello, my name is JW. This is Path to OSCP, and I think this is episode 7, which will be covering basically day 4 and 5. I'm now at day 5. Um, I left off on day 3, basically going through some Linux exploits, and I move forward from that to actually uh, getting some actual uh, real-world exploits from exploit DB and modifying those because basically when people post their example exploits uh, they usually have return addresses that are very specific to a very specific version of uh, well that was very specific uh, to some version of Windows or Linux at a different patch level or service patch level or so forth so that the addresses will change depending on your computer and so usually you can't just expect to download uh, an exploit from exploit DB and just run it and you definitely shouldn't uh, because basically they can contain anything if you don't actually know what you're doing and you're just trying to be trying to be smarter than you are and wishing that this shellcode that is nice hexadecimal blob of text that it actually contains what the comments say it contains then you might be in for a world of hurt because they could be just deleting your hard drive and coming on to IRC and say that hey I'm a jackass and that could happen uh, Exploit DB shouldn't contain those kinds of exploits. They should be very well vetted because the, the Exploit DB is hosted by Offensive Security themselves. But there's plenty of other places where you can get the exploits, and you just need to be careful where you actually download your payloads. Uh, but I was able to get a few different exploits, uh, make them work in my lab environment, and actually get reverse shells from real world vulnerabilities was very nice changing some C code and uh, generating some nice payloads uh, I also learned about uh, different file transfer methods um, also one interesting thing was the fact that for example uh, when you get a reverse shell you are you are limited to only non-interactive input and output. So basically you can't uh, do FTP or whatever because that interactive login shell does not work when you have a reverse shell with Netcat, for example. So they taught me plenty of ways to get around that, how to do uh, non-interactive methods of getting files to download and move files between systems. Uh, also did my first privilege escalation uh, issues or vulnerabilities, exploits, whatever. Um, and went forward with the, with the reading material. Actually stop watching the videos because basically, as far as I can see, there isn't much difference between listening to the videos and reading the books uh, or reading the PDF and I will anyway need to read the PDF to find the exercises and the PDF contains basically nice snippets of code um, that are used in the exercises but also relevant to actually exploiting machines uh, so for me it's actually been quicker to just browse through the text material and just skip the video content totally. Uh, if I was, let's say, normally I would prefer to listen to, uh, like for example, YouTube uh, security conference talks. I love listening to them. I don't enjoy watching them usually. Uh, and I can put them on the background and listen for keywords and let's see if there's some new interesting information and so forth. Uh, but for this, because this requires my full attention, 
uh, for me, the PDF material is easier to follow, especially since it contains quite a lot of screenshots and uh, text, uh, like code blocks. Uh, and that's, uh, that's how I usually read. Uh, either way, I skim for the code blocks and see screenshots for the actual effect this is having. And basically all of the uh, non-monospace -mon text in between is just filler, so to speak. Um, yeah, on yesterday I was a little tight on uh, timetables due to some uh, real-world uh, job uh, pressures, uh, but thankfully today I've been able to hack away uh, with the power of Red Bull and uh, I got through a lot of material. I did some simple Java applet uh, exploitation. Well, that's that doesn't seem like it's a big hurdle to uh, go over. Like, hey, a vulnerable Java application. Who would have thunk it? Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, uh, proof of concept, lesson learned. Next, I have now demo code uh, if I should ever need it in these labs. I don't know what the whether there's any reason I would need to use uh, Java applets in, in the labs, I don't know yet. Uh, then was a whole big chapter on web application security. And given my uh, decade plus of doing web applications, including security with them, it was... I didn't learn much, let's say this. Uh, it was a nice refresher. There were little tips and tricks that uh, like a little different ways of doing things that I had done previously but mostly same old same old and I was able to breeze through it quite quickly uh, except for the places where basically it tells you manually uh, enumerate this database with this specific SQL injection uh, I think I could have just skipped over it uh, but I didn't. Uh, I mean, I haven't done SQL injection manually uh, in a while, so I thought it would be worth my time. Uh, and after, of course, after doing it manually, it will t then they will tell you that, oh, by the way, there's this wonderful new tool that you can use called SQL Map. Wow. Uh, and of course, it automates everything and is bloody brilliant. But I mentioned this already on the IRC chat that it seemed to me that uh, first introducing, like the f one chapter was basically, this is how you do SQL injection manually. Okay, blah, 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 and do it uh, with exercises. Then the next uh, chapter is basically, hey, this is SQL map. Just type these magic commands and poof, you have the full database done. Uh, but then the exercise was, Use SQL map to dump the whole database. And then the second one was use manual SQL injection to enumerate this database. My entire comment for that, for the documentation was just no. And I moved on. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks to my background in that, I was able to get through that. I'm currently on page 266. So way past uh, the midway point. Actually, let me quickly calculate 266 over 374. I have gone through 70% of the material in the first five days. Uh, and as I said, I'm, not, I'm no longer watching those videos at the moment. I might do them uh, in the background one when I'm doing some some of those uh, reconnaissance tasks that I will be doing first off when I'm starting to hit the actual labs and lab machines. Um, one thing I did do, uh, actually, and, and I figured this just today, that I might as well be running, like ro long running Nmap scans of the lab network on the background because those take time. I'm spending time as I'm doing these studies I might as well be using my network lab connection for something actually useful 
uh, in addition to the actual exercises. So I'm just running. I opened up ZenMap, uh, which is a nice uh, GUI interface for Nmap. And basically, I just selected the slow and safe scan or something like that. Uh, basically, it's going to take many, many hours. Uh, but it should be giving me, harvesting me plenty of nice information about the services open on on those machines that I'm able to uh, basically try and attack from the get-go. Uh, but with the added benefit that I can hit the ground running once I'm done with the exercises, because uh, I will have a swath of uh, information on these machines, like op all, all, of, all of the open ports, of course, that's... That's quick, but also doing service sniffing and that sort of stuff that takes time because there are like very specialized payloads to figure out uh, what the operating system version is. If this is an FTP version, if the FTP server, what kind of version is it? If it doesn't give you a banner and so forth, Nmap does that all of you know, all of that automatically for you, but you just need to give it a lot of time. But since it's now effectively a weekend for me, I don't need to work tomorrow uh, since I worked on Sunday uh, and we it will be working on Sunday. Uh, I will still continue hacking even though it's uh, half past 10 already in the evening. Uh, so I will be continuing hacking until at least midnight probably uh, trying to power through the materials so that hopefully during the weekend I would be able to, hopefully, fingers crossed, finish the material and get to the actual owning of the lab network. That's it. Thank you very much for watching.